Hey guys, I'm in Siren Sesta because very shortly over my shoulder there is going to be a Link My Ride group ride heading out. And as founding member of the app, Tom Peacock is also going to be here to sort of greet everybody, get some cool pictures. But he's also spared some time to speak to us. Okay, Tom, we're here sat outside Ride 24 7 after the Link My Ride ride has departed. Unfortunately, we haven't made it out, but you're here and you're gonna talk about descending tips, aren't you? I am. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Right, so what advice and guidance can you give to people in order to improve their descending? Where do you want to start with this? Let's start with the, the obvious things. Yeah. Bike setup is the initial thing you want to be thinking about. Yeah, tyres, tyre pressure. You don't want too hard tyre pressures because then it's, uh, yeah, you're gonna get destabilised in the corners. Yeah, you also don't want a too high a saddle so your, low, your centre of gravity can be lower. I mean, that's obviously bike position. It's, yeah. But, you know, if, you, if you're someone who, yeah, you don't exactly know where your saddle should be, you should, it should so be on the lower side. So they're getting some of the basics right. Is yeah, the just a, yeah, the basics right, yeah. In terms of tyres and pressures, what sort of tips have you got for that? I think, yeah, generally 28s are fine for everyday, everyday use. You can do a bit of gravel and bumpy road, flat road, whatever. Yeah. And yeah, I guess the pressure depends on your weight. Do, 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 do you talk about PSI or bar in uh, well, you GCN? Can, you can talk either metric, whatever you prefer. Um, well, I use like four, 4.2 bar. You just asked me which I prefer, and I'm about to go, what sort of PSI is that? I don't know. I don't <laughs> no, know, I don't know I used to do PSI, and then since you know, turning pro, it's all bar. So. Yeah. So, are there any other tips in terms of bike setup that you want to go on, or should we move on to the next tip? Disc brakes will give you more confidence, the more reliable the brake. So you're, a, you're an advocate of the disc brake bike. You think it's a good thing? Yeah, I think I think it is a good thing. I think it makes your bike a bit heavier compared yeah. to. So if you're in hill climbs, you probably don't need to carry a disc brake up the up the hill, do you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't uh, know. Have you seen the speed some of these people go up hill these days? It's crazy. <laughs> no, do they need to brake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't need good brakes, do they? Yeah, that's very true. Um, you did mention about having your bike set up is also helping improve your confidence. Yeah. So do you think that's something that people need to work on and build as well? I think confidence is, yeah, really important to descending. Building it up slowly without crashing is, is you know, while you're learning the skills is, is, is really important. And that's to have the confidence and in your ability and your bike is, is really important to, to, to then take, you know, being able to just descend, but then descend really well and fast. Talking about, um, you mentioned crashing and stuff there. So in terms of people that maybe have had an off, maybe with descending or at any point when they've been out riding, are there any, is there anything you can, advice you can give in terms of building up your confidence from a crash or is it a case of just taking your time? What do you think on that? Yeah, I think you've got to put it into, into perspective. You know, you need to know why you crashed and, and how it happened and don't just think, you know, it's going to happen again. Like, you don't, you don't forget how to, to yeah, used to build up slowly. And after I crashed in Lavanier in the wet, in the mountains, I was, it took me a long time to get back the confidence descending in the wet in, in, in the mountains. And yeah, sometimes it takes a while, but you, you know, you just have to build up slowly within your, what you're comfortable with. Now, when it comes to the physical act of going through a corner, what can people do? They're bombing down descent, they're approaching the corner, what's the first sort of steps and things they want to be doing? Yeah, first of all, position on the bike. I think going on the drops is better, lower centre of gravity. Then as you approach the corner, you, you want to be putting your weight, your outside leg straight and the pedal to down. And then you need to put, it's a bit counterintuitive, but your weight on the inside of your handlebar and that'll lean your bike in. You don't need to turn. Okay, yeah. so we're going through a left-hand corner, right-hand foot down, Yeah. a little bit of pressure on the inside. A little so the bit of weight on, the, on your left hand, yeah. Yeah, what about um, the perspective of where people should be looking at the, when they're approaching the corner? Yeah. Don't be staring down at your head unit. No, <laughs> look through the corner where you want to go. Um, anticipate the speed you need to be going, how far you're going to drift out with the speed you've got. And obviously then, you know, the, the basics of yeah, outside to apex to outside. 
and also thinking about where the apex is because if the corner is, you know, regular, you, it's in the middle. But yeah. If it tightens up, you want to be hitting the apex later. Okay, right, a couple of questions from me about descending, actually. Do you find that riding different disciplines of cycling help cross over in terms of the skills from one transfer to the other, say mountain biking and road? Yeah, the skills do cross over, but in terms of descending, it's the, the feeling you have for the bike. Being able to feel how it's re reacting to the road and uh, yeah, how much grip you have and, and that aspect, the feeling and the... So you think that comes more relationship with the bike? Do you think that comes more from spending time on the terrain that you're trying to perfect rather than using crossover skills? No, I think crossover is important because you, you understand the wider variety of terrain and, and grip levels. So if you ride on the gravel, you understand you learn that it's you've got less grip, but you've actually got you know on the road it's you haven't got much sliding room, it's either grip or not. Yeah. You're, on, you're on your ass. Whereas on the gravel you can slide a bit and you can play with it a bit more. And yeah, that, that feeling you can cross over. Okay. Do you ever get scared when you're descending or is it a matter of fact that you're always like looking at the job in hand, planning where you're going, regulating your speed? I think, yeah, in, like for example in a race, if, if we're descending and you know, there's no reason for me to be taking any risks, I get quite scared with the people around me. They're taking risks. But then if the race is on, then no, it's like full focus. How do you... Um, how do you choose the line that you're going on through some of the descents? So obviously you're racing all around the world. Sometimes you're not going to have the luxury of knowing exactly every corner what's coming yeah. up. So yeah. how do you go about trying to optimise your descending when you're almost descending it blind on a road you've never ridden before? I mean, we, we always have the route on our garments. Yeah. So we can see where we're going roughly. And it also helps massively if you're at the front of the bunch and you can follow a motorbike the motorbike with the brake light and you can see how fast they're going. Oh, that's a good tip, actually. Hopefully everyone has a motorbike ahead of them when they're out yeah. riding now. I was thinking <laughs> on, on Alpe d'Huez, everyone's, you know, it helped massively that I had a motorbike in front of me. Oh, yeah, okay, good point. I like that. Um, have you had any coaching for your descending? Like, clearly you're, you're one of the best descenders around. Is this something that you have seem to have a natural ability at and you've just progressed and worked at throughout your career? or? Is it something that someone has gone out and gone, right, Tom, like, this is the basics, you need to learn this, and then it's evolved? I think a bit of both. I mean, yeah, in the UK we have pretty good, well, I don't know how it is how it is now, but we had good, you know, pathway with Go Ride and ODA, ODP, and, and these things, pathways, and, and, you know, there we would do, yeah, cornering drills and things and, and practice. And also, you know, riding crits, when I was younger um, in the UK, because we had the mint, or we did have a mint crit scene. Yeah. The, all these things helped. Yeah. So really a case of like, practice, 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 and be prepared to try and push the limits. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Sometimes and then- Sometimes you're gonna crash, but. Yeah, at some point you're gonna crash, but hopefully that means you've found where the limit is. Next time you'll be even faster. Yeah. Okay. The thing is, that you pushing, pushing the limits until you crash, you need to kind of wait until you're skillful enough to be able to save it. That's yeah. also something. That's a good point, actually. And then final thing I want to just touch on is talking about when we're braking, you're approaching a descent, how is it that people should look to maybe regulate their speed? Get all the braking done in a straight line? Is there any braking to be done in a corner at all? How would you I approach think, this? I think it depends. Obviously, if you're going super fast, you want to, you want to you want to keep yourself stabilised as much as possible. And I think if you're going too fast in a corner, it's better to use your rear brake rather than your front brake, because it can kind of turn you around the corner. Whereas your front brake, you know, if you lose grip with your front wheel, then you're screwed, aren't you? Yeah, fair. Okay, right, Tom, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. I hope that's been really helpful for everyone at home. Um, right, we're out of here. See you later.